previously on Sodor, the early years. Do you mean you just came along? Tis a bit of a tale. 57646, I've received a request from the Northwest Railway on the island of Sodor. They need another engine, and I've decided to send you. Well, why not go along with 57646 then? I'm sure that if you show you are a really useful engine, he'll arrange for both of you to stay. But we'll need all of that time. We can't afford to be delayed at all. I had made my plan to join Donald on his trip to Sodor. Two nights later it was time to carry that plan out. Timing would be critical, and we'd only have one shot at it. As arranged, I was taking 47288's slow goods down towards Gretna. I was feeling a wee bit nervous, and despite what Neil had said, I could not help having second thoughts. What if our controller realised what we are doing? Or supposing Sir Topham had sent one of us back anyway? It was only beginning to dawn on me how much of a risk I was actually taking, but it was too late to turn back now. I soon reached the first siding I was due to stop at. I quickly shunted my brake van out of the way and set out the last two trucks on my train. After collecting the brake van, I headed for the main line, only to be stopped by the station master. For a horrifying moment, I thought I'd been found out. Is there something wrong? I asked, managing to keep a straight face. The nut mail's been delayed, he replied. You have to wait here until it passes. Do you ken how long that will be? I asked anxiously. If we were delayed too long, we wouldn't have time to paint over my numbers. It'll be by in about ten minutes or so, replied the station master. He returned to the station a moment later. But this is the last thing we need, I said nervously. If I was to get to Sodor, I'd need to paint over my cab numbers before I joined Donald. That way, no one would know where I was. Dinner fast yourself, replied my driver. We'll just make up the time on the way. Aye, I replied. After a few more uncomfortable minutes, the night mail blasted past. We'd been significantly delayed by this point, and I was beginning to doubt whether we'd be able to reach Sodor or not. After a few more minutes, I was cleared to proceed out onto the main line. I knew I'd have to hurry. The rest of the run went smoothly, and I managed to make up a wee bit of time along the way. I eventually reached my last stop and shunted my last few trucks. While my driver spoke to the station master, my famine got out the two tins of black paint they'd brought with them in the cab. 57646 is due through in about 12 minutes, my driver said when he had returned. He and my fireman quickly set to work, painting over the numbers on my cab sides. They had only just finished when Donald steamed past. A few moments later, the points changed and I headed out onto the main line. As arranged, Donald was waiting up ahead. Well, this is it, I said. Dinna fash, Donald replied. We'll be right. My driver coupled us up while my fireman dumped my fire. We quickly set off, with my crew lying on the floor of my cab so they wouldn't be seen. I was trying to be as unnoticeable as possible. About five minutes later, a low rumbling noise drifted through the air. Does that sound like a diesel to you? I asked nervously. Aye, Donald replied. Hush now, we'd best be discreet. Neither of us said a word as we passed the diesel with his train of sleeping passengers. But as we approached Barrow in Furness, we realised he hadn't raised the alarm. I'd noticed he'd been from the London Midland region, so maybe he just didn't ken who we were. A moment later, something else occurred to me. 57646, I said. 
We're going to need some other way to differentiate ourselves. If Sir Topham Hayes is using our numbers, they'll send me back for sure. Aye, I've had a thought or two about that, he replied. What was the name of your first driver? I thought back for a moment. As I recall, it was Douglas. Douglas Anderson, I replied. Mine was Donald McTavish. I smiled. Donald and Douglas. I like the sound of that, Donald. So do I, Douglas, he replied. I couldn't have believed it when we reached Barrow. We've made it, I said. No, exactly, Donald replied. We've still got to get to a place called Tidmouth. Is that where we'll be staying? I asked. I'm not sure, but I gather it's a major junction, although their main stations are somewhere called Knapford. While Donald had a drink at the water tower, his driver and fireman removed his numbers. We then set out for Tidmouth. was just on sunrise when we reached Tidmouth. There was a railway inspector waiting for us, and he seemed a wee bit surprised. We're here as ordered, sir, Donald said. I'm Donald, and this is Douglas. The inspector looked from one of us to the other. There must be some mistake, he said. I'm sure we were only expecting one engine. He paused for a moment. I'd better go get Sir Topham. There's no need to rush, Donald said. We'll wait here till you get back. As the inspector headed away, I had a feeling I wasn't the quiet out of the woods. It was an interesting few months after that, but Neil had been right, and eventually Sir Topham allowed both of us to stay. Douglas finished. You must have been pretty anxious, Oliver observed. Aye, that's the whole reason I made that mistake with Thomas's special coach. I didn't think I could have run away on my own. Then it's just as well you didn't have to, Donald said. Aye. Douglas agreed, and he couldn't help thinking about how lucky he'd been back then. Do you know what happened to Neil? Doc asked. He'd heard about him from some of the other engines. I've heard he's in the National Railway Museum in York, Douglas replied. He's lucky they kept him around, Doc said. Aye, agreed Douglas. But then again, I suppose all of us here are lucky too. The other engines could only agree.